Welcome back everybody, and if you are new here, welcome to Gochujang Mama YouTube channel. I like to cook all sorts of things on this channel, and please consider subscribing and be sure to click that bell notification to get my latest videos. Okay, today I'm going to make crispy oven roasted potatoes, and today I'm using three pounds of petite gold gourmet potatoes. You could definitely use peeled russet potatoes. So first, I'm going to parboil these. Here I have two and a half quarts of water already boiling, and I am using Kenji Lopez Alt's method for crispy oven roasted potatoes. I'll leave the link to his Serious Eats Food Lab recipe in the description below. Okay, so back to the water. Here I'm going to add one ounce of salt. I'm actually using sea salt, but if you have something like kosher salt, that works too. I'm going to give that a mix just to make sure that it dissolves and combines with the boiling water. And then next, I am going to add a half teaspoon of baking soda. The use of baking soda will give you an alkaline water. This in turn will help break down the pectin on the potato and give you an extra crispy exterior. Now, I'm not coming up with this out of my own research. This is referring back to the video for Kenji Lopez Alt's method of boiling these potatoes. So definitely go check out that video. He goes into further detail why all of this works. Okay, so that is all combined. Now I'm going to add my potatoes. And like I mentioned earlier, I typically like to do this with a peeled russet potato, but these were on sale and I thought, hmm, I wonder if this will work even with potato skin on it. And the skin on these is not thick like a russet potato, so that's something to think about. So I'm just going to let these come up to a boil. Once they start boiling, then I'm going to time them for 10 minutes. And I want to make sure they're submerged. So while my potatoes are parboiling, I'm going to actually work on the oil that I'm going to use to coat all of the parboiled potatoes. So here's how I did that. Here I have a small pan and to that I'm going to add four ounces or a half cup of cooking oil. You could use the type of fat or oil of your choice. I believe in the video he used something like olive oil, but I think cooking oil has a high smoke point and the type that I'm using is actually an expeller pressed canola oil. But like I always say, definitely use what you have on hand and convenient for you. Once my oil is preheated, I'm just going to move it around. I don't want anything to burn, so I'm working with a medium heat. Now I'm going to add some aromatics and flavor into this oil. Here I have just a little bit of chopped onion, maybe a quarter cup of onion. I didn't even weigh this out. You definitely can use just a small piece of onion and dice it. And I'm going to add garlic, but I want the onion to cook first before I add the garlic because the garlic will start toasting and burning if I let that in first. So I'm just going to move that around. But you can definitely add anything aromatic that you want your potatoes to taste like. For example, herbed potatoes. You could add some rosemary, some thyme. You can definitely add maybe some flakes of chili pepper to add a little bit of spice and heat. It is definitely up to you. But I'm just going with onion and garlic today. So once my onions have had a chance to sort of fry and saute in the oil, I'm going to add the garlic. Here I have two roughly chopped cloves of garlic. Again, the amount is up to you. I went with two cloves. You can add more or just leave it out and add, again, the aromatics of your choice. I'm just going to let this fry until everything gets slightly golden brown. Once everything is golden brown and cooked, I am going to remove it from the heat and sieve the oil. And then you are left with this aromatic, flavorful oil that you can coat your potatoes in. By the way, don't toss out anything that you fried in the oil. I actually like to eat this on the side, especially since this is onion, or if you're doing something like herbs, you can toss it and fold it into the cooked roasted crispy potato after. Once I've sieved my oil, I'm going to set it aside until I need it. At this point, my potato should be done. 
and all I'm going to do is use a knife and check for doneness. You'll want to boil or parboil your potatoes right at knife tender. If you're using a fork and the potato releases easily, I think you've probably overboiled them. They might turn to mush. I also want to mention, depending on how large you cut your potato, that will also determine the cook time. So the cook time will slightly vary. These took right at 10 minutes of boil time. So I am going to strain out all of that boiling liquid. And because these have skin, I'm going to give them a poke and a mash just to sort of rough up the exterior because that's going to create extra crispiness when we roast it, which is why if you are using a peeled russet, that definitely will give you maximum crunch. Okay, so I think I did a pretty good job of roughing up my potatoes. Now it's time to dress them and roast them. So here I'm going to use my aromatic oil that we made earlier again. Do what you will. And now I'm just going to add some salt to taste. And what I mean by salt to taste is basically start something like a quarter teaspoon, half teaspoon, and you know, use what you're comfortable with. If you definitely cook all the time, your hands will have a memory of what you like to season and salt your food. So that's kind of what I mean when I say that. I probably salted these with somewhere between a quarter teaspoon to a half teaspoon of salt. I'm going to give them a mix. And don't worry if you're using potatoes and they're starting to fall apart, that's good. That'll create crispiness in the oven. Now, if they're super mushy, that can be difficult. Okay, so now on a baking sheet, I am going to spread out all of my potatoes and you'll want to give them room because that'll give you extra crispiness on the exterior of the potato. Once my potatoes are ready, I am going to place them in a preheated oven at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, depending on the calibration of your oven, I guess I should say, that temperature might vary. If you find that 450 degrees is just scalding crazy hot for your oven and things will burn, then maybe scale it down to something like 425, 400. But mine will do well in 450 degrees Fahrenheit. I am going to roast these for around 30 minutes. And halfway through, I'm gonna give them a shake. You might actually want to flip them over. This is my lazy way of doing that. So once you do that halfway through, just let them continue roasting. And then when they are done, they are going to be golden brown and crispy like this. So today I am serving roasted potatoes alongside tender, juicy Hawaiian ribeye steaks. Now the steak recipe for this I will leave in the description below and also at the end of this video. But this recipe is basically my take on the Houston's restaurant ribeye steak. So for those of you that are familiar with Houston's, that is the recipe that I do at home. Okay, but back to these crispy potatoes. So once your potatoes are done, you can dress them in fresh herbs. I actually have lightly dried herbs and I'm using lightly dried parsley and lightly dried chives. I think it looks and tastes great on these potatoes. And the benefit of adding lightly dried herbs, that's less moisture, so it does help maintain that crispy exterior that you worked so hard to get. I also wanted to show you sort of the difference in exterior from the potatoes that had the skin on them and some of them that had that interior exposed. You'll see the skin definitely did get golden brown and crispy, but take a look at the crispiness on this potato where the skin was removed and more of the potato was exposed. You can definitely see the difference. So dinner is ready and everyone cannot wait to dig in. I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it and thanks for watching.